friends, and welcome back to I Like Reddit channel. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. Today, friends, we have four stories out of the Entitled Parents subreddit. Let's begin. Our first story is posted by Dark909911. Entitled Mother messes up big at the ER. First off, I was just a bystander who watched this whole thing unfold in front of me. As I was sitting in the waiting room at the ER, there was a little girl about 10 by her looks. She was totally bald and didn't hide it. Overhearing her mom, I came to find out that she has cancer and is getting ready for chemo treatment. At this hospital, they have service dogs meant to keep kids calm. The dog they let her take care of was only small. I have no idea what breed. Sorry. She was on the gurney waiting for her turn, happily petting the dog. This is when the EM joins the story. She walks right up to the counter with her little girl who's crying. The EM said that her kid fell off the swing set and got a black eye. She was told to take a seat and wait until called. As she is walking to sit down, her daughter spots the dog and squeals that she wants to pet the puppy. The little girl's mother tried to explain that the dog was a very special dog and that her daughter was taking care of him and he was taking care of her and to please not touch the dog. The EM did not like that and started speaking at a very high volume where everybody could hear, my baby wants to pet the mutt and she's going to pet the mutt and put her hands on her hip like she had already won the fight. The EM tried to reach over the little girl's mother to take the dog, but when she did, she pulled out the IV on the little girl's arm, landing her mother directly on her. I'm not sure about the dog, but it yelped loud, so I assume she did. At this hospital, they don't just have security, but there's also a police officer stationed there as well. Both the security and the cop grabbed the EM and put her on the floor hard. She landed face first on a big rubber mat that they have by the door. In seconds, she was cuffed and hauled into the security room, the whole time screaming about all the things that angry EMs scream about. Her daughter was taken into a quiet room with a nice nurse, while the other nurses worked on getting the poor young girl hooked back up to her IV. The poor little dog was so scared, he was useless to the girl. Luckily, they have more than one dog at this site at all times. This time, they brought a German Shepherd. After I was seen by my doctor, after I was seen by my doctor, on the way out, I saw one of the security guys and asked him how things ended up with the entitled mother. He laughed and said that she got trespassed from the hospital and its property for resisting arrest, assault on a police officer, I guess she scratched his face enough to make him bleed, interfering with a service animal while it's on duty, assault on the young girl and her mother. If there was more, I can't remember. I only wish I was there to see her when she got taken out kicking and screaming. Our next story is posted by Ryder Fighter 201 Entitled mom threatens legal action and claims her child is scared for his life after a kid's movie preview. Many years ago, I worked in a movie theater. I was standing around the customer service desk with a few others when a mother walks up with a small child, about six or seven maybe, stormed out of the theater and walked up to the customer service desk, anger in her face. She demanded to know how on earth such graphic material ended up playing before a kid's movie. All of us were confused and wondering if somehow a red band, uncensored violence and or language trailer ended up in front of her movie by mistake, or if perhaps the wrong movie had been playing. Things that we had heard of happening, though they had never happened at our location. The manager inquired about it further. As if you don't know, she screamed. How dare you put such graphic images of dead bodies and skeletons in the beginning of a movie meant for children? that has no place to be shown to kids. What's wrong with you? No kid should have to see that. None. It's too frightening. My son was in there and he saw it. He's going to be scared for life. What are you going to do about that? He should never have seen the skeletons like that. After the movie finished playing and no other parents complained, the projectionist went back through and rewatched the beginning in search of this graphic and frightening content involving skeletons and or bodies. At the time, there was a trailer for the 2003 adaptation of Peter Pan. Good movie. You should look it up for yourself. At about one minute, 19 seconds mark of the official trailer too, there is a shot, a very brief shot, that lasts perhaps one second that shows some skeletons in chains. Seriously, you can blink and miss it. That's how brief it is. Not gory skeletons, not bloody ones normal dirty skeletons like the ones you might see in a science class around halloween peter pan 2003 was rated pg 
a notoriously stringent and conservative rating board felt that it was deserving of a parental guidance rating, not PG-13, not rated R. Therefore, they deemed everything within the movie, including skeletons, was acceptable for children. Honestly, I'm not even sure the kid noticed the skeletons. He was completely calm and just standing there while his mom won on a tirade against the manager. I'd be more willing to bet that he had been more damaged by her overprotective fly-off-the-handle mom than a brief one-second-long shot of a few skeletons. In the end, the mom demanded a refund and stormed out, shouting the whole way out that she was suing us. As far as I know, I never saw nor heard from her again. If you're enjoying the content so far, please put a heart emoji in the comment section down below. Hey friends, sorry about the chainsaw noise in the background. My neighbor just randomly decided that he is going to cut down some branches off of a tree. So again, I'm sorry about the noise. It's really irritating. Our next story is posted by Miss Fleming. My pregnant sister is becoming an entitled parent. So my sister is pregnant and because I knit, she asked if I would be willing to make baby blankets. I agreed to do so as a gift to her and the baby. I'm not charging her for my time or any materials that I've used. I'm not making anything other than blankets as I often cook for her and her boyfriend and I will be looking after the baby for free. The entitlement started when she messaged me to ask if I would do a photo shoot for her as I did photography as my GCSEs and, and I owned a camera. I asked her if I was going to be paid as I would have to travel to her and use my time to do the photo shoot and editing the images. She said no, that I would get food and drink and that she wasn't going to pay for a photographer that she wasn't planning on hiring. I told her no, and she said that I should do it because we're siblings. She said that I should do it even though we don't live in the same city and that she would pay for a taxi. I told her that paying for a taxi is not the same as paying me. She said that she would ask my twin, and I told her to do it then. If enough people want it, I have screenshots. Edit. I keep getting comments saying it's not entitlement, that's just what families are for. My sister and I aren't close. We never have been, and she's often extremely rude to me. My gift to her was the baby blankets that I was knitting for her. We have several other sisters who aren't getting slash making anything for her, so I think it's unfair to say that families just do stuff like that. Also, take into consideration I'm a full-time college student with a part-time job for people saying that she's not asking too much. Edit 2. Okay, thank you so much for all the upvotes. This blew up a lot quicker than I thought possible. Thank you all for the silver award. I'm 17 and I get the bus everywhere. From my city to hers, it takes about three hours when there's no traffic. I don't run a photography business. I was only planning on charging her 30 to 40 pounds for the whole thing. No, I don't have to go to college like a physical location, but I still do online lessons almost every day and I have a lot of coursework. I actually have a story similar to OP's story. My, my dad and I are both graphic artists and photographers by trade. We actually have our own business and everything. Well, it was like maybe six to ten years ago. A cousin who whose husband was dying of cancer, asked us to do, while we were on vacation, asked us to do um, a little photo shoot of her, her son, and, and her husband in a park. And we're like, sure. My dad said that he would take care of it and stuff. And I was like, okay. I went off and did my own thing, and he did the photo shoot. When we got back, we looked at the pictures and everything, and there were several good pictures there. I mean, if it was us just editing the pictures, it would have been 10 to 15 shots, maybe, because there was a lot of duplicate shots and that sort of thing. You can only get so many. Well, this lady, she wanted she wanted all the pictures. We're like, no, that's not how editing works. Also, she was asking us to print out all the pictures, and she wanted um, a really expensive photo package. And we're like, no. We ended up saying no a lot, which is hard for the both of us, because it's just hard saying no to people sometimes. And it was a huge pain in the butt, because she's not paying for time or materials. Again, we didn't say that we wanted to get paid for this, but when it gets to the point where it's so expensive, then you're, you're getting into the area where now this is costing us a hell of a lot more money than just being nice, and, and you're just taking advantage of us. And she's like, oh, no, 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 I'll, I'll pay for materials. And we're like, this is too expensive at this point. At one point, she wanted like 10 or 15 11 by 14s at cost 
just the paper, not the ink, just the paper. It's about $1.60 a piece if you're going with like nice Costco glossy paper. And, and it also takes like 15 to 20 minutes to print out. And if you screw up, you're out all that ink and that paper. And I mean, there were a couple of screw ups, you know, the, the printer runs out of ink or something like that, or during the middle of the job. And yeah, we've had that happen before. It ended up taking us like six weekends or so in order to get the whole thing done because we're also working during this whole thing. And she was just very entitled and it really just rubbed us the wrong way. And I don't like that you should just do it because family thing that OP is having to deal with, especially with people who are in the end really ungrateful, you know, that you're sacrificing time for them and they just expect you to give. Our final story is posted by MTB3211. EM demands a full refund for a bike her son crashed. A little background. I started working at a bike shop about a month after the lockdown started. Bike shops were still open because supposedly they count as necessary transportation. Anyway, I had barely any school and my MTB team wasn't practicing anymore, so I thought it'd be a good time to make some money. I arrived at the bike shop around 9am, checked in with the owner slash manager. I was only allowed to work on the cash register and some occasional customer service since it was only my second week on the job. The other guys got to work on the bikes in the back since a large part of our business was bike repairs. The day was going pretty smoothly. Two people brought bikes in for repairs. One family bought three bikes for their kids, but then, dun dun dun, she came in. This lady came in huffing and puffing with her two kids being dragged behind her, plus one of the kids' bikes, no mask at all. I'm like, oh man, I can't do this today. Me, could you please put a mask on? It's store policy right now. To my surprise, she said, oh, sorry, I forgot. Me, thank you. What can I do for you today? EM, I wanna return my son's bike. It doesn't work anymore. We don't have a return policy on bikes, but have a one month warranty that covers minor and easy to fix damage. Me, sorry, we don't allow returns. We will fix the bike on us if the warranty is still active. EM, ugh. Fine, me. Okay, we'll need the receipt or proof of purchase. EM, couldn't you just look my name up? Me, no, I can't. EM proceeds to rifle through her purse for five minutes trying to find the receipt. When she does, she slaps it on the counter. EM, there. I take a look at the receipt and the date on the receipt and it was from seven months ago. Me, sorry, but you bought this bike seven months ago. EM, Sal. Me, our warranty only covers one month of use. EM, what does that mean? Me. It means I can't fix it for free. EM. Well, why not? Me. Because I just told you. EM, in a very threatening voice, Just give me a refund and I'll leave. Me. What? No. The repairs to your bike won't even be very much. Only around $45. EM. I don't want it fixed anymore. I want my money back. Me. Ma'am, I don't accept returns on bikes, and if you really don't want the bike anymore, you could donate it to charity. EM. I've had it with you. Where's your manager? After she said those fateful words, something even worse happened. I had forgotten about her kids the ones that she had brought in with her, I heard a loud crash and looked up to see one of our bikes that was hanging from the rack on the floor. EK, oops, me, what the hell are you doing? EM, don't talk to my son like that. Me, trying to recompose myself, your son just knocked down a $4,000 bike. EM, you are being so rude. My son didn't mean to do that, right, EK? EK, yeah, it was an accident. My boss, bursting out from the back, wondering what the heck is going on, Boss, OP, why is that bike on the floor? Me, this lady's son knocked it down. My boss rushes over to the fallen bike to assess the damage. Boss, the frame is cracked. This is a carbon frame bike, which means if the frame's cracked, the bike is done for. Boss, this kid right here knocked it over? Me, yep. EM, he only knocked it over because your employee was harassing me. My boss and I, what? Boss, lady, I don't care why it was knocked over, but I trust my employee more than I trust you, and I'm going with what he said. I won't make you pay the full price for the bike since it's only the frame that's cracked, but I will need $2,000 from you. EM, what? Why do bikes cost so much? Boss, 
You don't have to pay it all right now. We could arrange a deal for monthly payments. Ian, I'm not paying for anything. You should be paying me for all that I've gone through in this shop. My son did nothing wrong, and it was your stupid employee who made it fall. Me. What? How did I make it fall? I wasn't even near the bike. The other kid starts to cry because of all the yelling. Ian, now look what you've done. The kid cries even louder. I'm calling the cops for trying to cheat me out of money and harassing me and my kids. I look over at my boss and he kind of shakes his head, telling me, just let her call the cops. Once the cops get there, she tells them a bogus story about how we were harassing her and her children and trying to cheat her out of money. She said that I had knocked the bike down and was lying about the damage to get money out of her. She also said when she tried to return her non-functioning bike that we had rejected her. My boss told me to just let her dig her own hole. When the police asked for our side of the story, my boss walks the officer into the back room and shows him the security footage of her son knocking down the bike. He then explained our return policy and their warranty. Finally, he showed them the damages to the bike that was knocked over confirming what we said and that we weren't lying. She was arrested and had to pay a bunch more than what she had originally had to pay. She had gotten two weeks in jail for resisting arrest and lying to the police officers. That's all the stories I have for today. Links to the original Reddit post will be in the description box below. Please stop on by Reddit to show the OP some love and an upvote. If you enjoy my videos, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification to let you know when I upload new videos. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.